Tech Conference uh, 2020. And uh, uh, today, uh, the, this is our final uh, session uh, for this conference. And uh, we are glad that all of you could uh, join us uh, in participating in, in this conference. Uh, we, our team, this conference has been uh, from Psalm uh, 46, uh, 10, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. So um, the Lord is with, the Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. So uh, that has been our theme and all our speakers uh, so far have been uh, talking uh, uh, based on that theme. And we hope that you've been blessed by this. This is uh, our 47th uh, uh, conference. Uh, we've been uh, doing this since 1983. <laughs> So uh, it's our 27th conference, and uh, and uh, we we want to um, excuse me one second. Uh, Hello. Yes. Um, so the, uh, this is our 27th conference and uh, uh, we, uh, we have been blessed uh, through so many years of having this conference at so many different places. And this is the first year uh, because of this virus that we've been able to meet uh, online. And like, as you can see, it has posed uh, quite a few challenges for us uh, in, in coordinating and hosting this, uh, this conference uh, because of the technology that's necessary to bring everybody together and also to bring the audio and video uh, in together at the same time. So uh, having said that, uh, we have had a, a great time uh, with all the speakers and with all the participants and all the worship leaders. We thank you all for your participation on this uh, in our 20, 27th uh, conference. And uh, hopefully next year, we will be able to actually meet physically uh, at a location uh, instead of online. God willing, and uh, but uh, uh, we will uh, thank the Lord for His uh, grace and mercy in being able to come together today, and uh, we will uh, start our uh, opening uh, uh, today with a prayer from Psalm uh, 105. Thank you, thank you, Lord, uh, Lord, uh, our God. When where the, where uh, you are there, and there is no other God like you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for being with us uh, this time, Father, and knowing that be still and know that I am God, Lord. And uh, you are the one who stands by every promise, Lord, made to his people, generation after generation. There is no other God, uh, uh, and you alone are God, Lord. We thank you, Father, for your presence with us, Lord. And as we gather together, uh, as a, a family, as a family, as a, in this Christian family conference, Lord, to, wor to worship you, we give you thanks, Lord, to proclaim your greatness, uh, to sing your praises, to seek your face, Lord, and to celebrate your faithful presence with us. We pray, Lord, that your spirit will guide us and inspire our worship, Father, and uh, open our mouths to sing and uh, speak your praise, Open our ears to, um, to hear your word. Open our eyes to see to you at work among us, Lord. And uh, open our hearts uh, to receive your love and also to receive your word that you have put on our special speakers, Lord. We offer ourselves to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. So uh, at this time, uh, I would uh, request... Uh, uh, Abhi and Kirtana to lead us in uh, praise and worship. Hello?
Praise the Lord. Good morning. Yet another Sunday that we're blessed with in our lives. And this is the final session of our CFC conference. Praise and thank God for all these months and all the sessions that we had. The blessed assurance that we get from God is renewed every minute of our day. You can't make a mess. In the same manner, I would like to read from Hebrews 10.22. And it says, Let us draw near with a truth, truthful heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. And first John says, I, I write these things to you who believe in the name of Son, name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. So there was a blind person. Her name was Mrs. Cap. And she was so amazing in music and she was so amazing in uh speaking of uh, the poetry that she has for Christ yet she was blind she used to play be beautiful um, music and piano so she wrote these words reflecting the saying from the Bible what Paul said for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain the same words that she wrote are the songs that we sing today and the beautiful hymn called Blessed, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. <coughs> so won't you all join and sing along with me? <coughs> Blessed Assurance Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Here of salvation, purchase of God, born of his peace.
perfect submission all is at rest This is my story. This is my song. I'm trying to check my own life to see if I have that courage, if I have the boldness to stand one day and to write down my own song and my own lyrics to my God. You and I have. question that this morning do I have the same faith that this lady this blind person had to stand strong and confess her faith in her God if you see the second verse it says the second line says visions of rapture now burst out of my sight it is so courageous for a blind person to write that line I mean what is she thinking in her mind her faith is so beyond the things that she can see with her own eyes she's envisioning the rapture time she's envisioning that angels coming down bringing glory from above what a blessed person she should have been of what love that she carried to God that she wrote this line visions of rapture not burst out of my side it takes courage church to actually display faith in God it exactly reminds us this morning that we walk by faith and not by sight we walk by faith and not by sight If you want to confess your story to the world and say this is my story this is my song in my savior I stand strong I encourage you to sing with me one more time This is my story This is my song Praise in my savior. same scene I want to ask you all a question I want to ask myself a question this morning what is worship to me 
And if you can see the screen, it says worship is, and it has a blank. <coughs> we can't hear your answers, but you can fill in the own blank for yourself. And answer your own self, what is worship to you? Is it a powerful weapon? Is it something you go to when you know that you have nowhere to go? What is worship to you? Is it grace? Is it the love of God? Is it the faith to blindly trust Him no matter what is going on in your life? And this morning, maybe our lives are so far away from the goodness of God. Maybe you you were questioning or I'm questioning, God, why is this happening? Why, why can I ever be happy? Or why am I always having doubt in my heart? Why am I always trying to please people? Or why am I always trying to be tempted towards this weakness that I want to run away from but still do we have that courage what Mrs. Cap had to see visions even though she was blind and to trust blindly do we have the courage like Job said when God took away everything that Job had everything he was, he was probably the world's richest man at one, one time. But when God slowly started taking away things, we read that he tore his clothes and he still said, God gives and God takes away. And he was still praising God. And it's the same with David. He still worshipped. He worshipped so undignified in front of people one day that he started tearing his clothes for the joy that the Lord brought him or maybe it's a silent heart but I don't know what worship is to you but whatever it is can we still worship God in whatever moment our life is right now If you don't know the song I still encourage you to read the lyrics of the song and to feel the worship is still beautiful when things don't go the right way or when still or when things are still going the way you planned <clears throat> Lord you see so far away a million miles or more it feels today and though I haven't lost my faith I must confess right now that it's hard for me to pray but I don't say and I don't know where to start but as you give the grace with all that's in my heart I will sing I will praise even in my darkest dark through the sorrow and the pain I will sing
still sing of the goodness of your love wherever I am this morning Lord wherever my situation is I still want to worship you because your word says God that you have plans for us that is prosperous that you died that you came down for me and that God sacrificed his only son for me. And your word is true. The devil might be saying that I am useless, that I am condemned, I am good for nothing. That maybe I, I don't stand worthy to live. That's why every day we see so many people committing suicide. So many people giving up on life or so much of hatred going on in the world that they're killing one another. And if you believe that God is still the same yesterday, today and forever, that God is still God. No matter what. And if not for anything, only because He's created you, He's called you your own, He's, he's died for you. At least for that. Can we shout out an amen and a God bless to Jesus this morning? I will sing. that God has but let's know that God's word is true and his plans are always for us for our good and we also read that his ways are not our ways his thoughts for us are not our thoughts maybe you you planned a beautiful day for yourself or or you planned a beautiful career but God has taken you in a different direction and said you gotta do this and you do not like it maybe you are not liking the place where you are maybe you are not liking the relationship that you are in maybe there's a lot of obstacles coming but still God is God Lord we want to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice we want to still lift our hands and we want to honor your word we want to honor all your promises even though you seem so far away this morning and through the situations of the pandemic but we still believe that you are God and we will still worship you this time in Jesus name I pray amen 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 thank you Abhi and Kirtana for leading us
And we are especially inspired by the, uh, the faithful ministry of Fanny Crosby, who wrote that beautiful hymn, uh, Blessed Assurance. Uh, she was blind, uh, and uh, in spite of her blindness, uh, she showed her faith and love to God uh, through her ministry of music, through her ministry of writing these beautiful songs. And we are indeed uh, uh, blessed to have such people of God who have been able to uh, praise God in spite of their handicaps. Uh, we are living in a world where uh, people expect us to have everything in our lives. Uh, you know, we want the best of health, the best of finances, the best of families. Uh, and, and yet, you know, when any one of these things is missing in our lives, immediately we, we become uh, introvert. We start thinking, is God really taking care of us? Uh, we just have to look at some of the examples that have been in before us. Uh, singers like uh, Fanny Crosby, who wrote that beautiful hymn and uh, take inspiration from that. And uh, we're really blessed for that. So we thank our uh, worship team again for leading us uh, uh, so faithfully throughout this conference. Uh, all these uh, sessions, they have been with us, uh, Abhi and uh, Kirtana and uh, Eben and uh, Pallavi. We thank them uh, for their faithfulness in, in bringing us the worship. And uh, also, uh, we also thank all our participants, everybody who's been with us all through all these sessions. Uh, and, uh, and also we had a great uh, testimony yesterday uh, from uh, Ravi, uh, John Ravi Benedict. Uh, he had uh, COVID for 45 days. He was in the hospital in Connecticut and uh, he was on a ventilator and he gave a powerful testimony yesterday of how God uh, brought him out of this uh, of his situation, how God was with him, uh, even though he was walking through the valleys of the shadows of death, uh, God was with him. And that is uh, the, our theme, which is for Psalm 4610. He especially was very happy about that. Be still and know that I am God. And he said, you know, God was with him even when he was on a ventilator. He was just reciting some of these psalms that God put in his heart and he was able to get through. So we have, we have to know that we have a living God. We have a God who's in control. He's Adonai, he's in, in, he's in control of our, lives, of our lives. So he's the Alpha and the Omega. So uh, we thank you all again for being with us. And as we are getting ready for our speaker, uh, is he online? Uh, Brother Sam is uh, Pastor Bandela online. Okay, so I, I believe he's still joining. Uh, so um, maybe we can do one more uh, song. Uh, Kirtana, Abhi, can you guys do Blessed Assurance one more time? Sure, Uncle. Okay, thank you. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, pure of salvation. Hello? Yes, Uncle. Uh, one minute, Uncle. Yes, we are almost there. Uh, thank you, Akirtana. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Okay. So uh, we, we do have a speaker online at this time. He is uh, Dr. Yesupadam Bandela, uh, and uh, he's the president of uh, Gospel Association of India, and he's a renowned evangelist uh, and uh, international 
uh, and um, he's been uh, the, with the Gospel Association since the 60s, and he's been their president since 1967. Uh, he has reached out and uh, been personally in touch with many world leaders. Uh, it's there in his bio, you must have heard of it. He's there. He even met with uh, Prime Minister Indira Gandhi, uh, and uh, also he met with uh, uh, yeah. Reverend Billy Graham before he died. So. We are blessed to have a person like this with us, uh, and he continues to minister faithfully to whatever he's put on his heart. That's, I just want to say a word of prayer for him. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for bringing us Pastor Yesu Padam Bandela with us, Lord. Uh, we pray, Lord, that you will uh, reveal to us the word that you put in his heart. Father, As even as we know, Lord, that be still and know that I am God. Uh, and uh, we, we pray that you will touch his heart uh, and mind uh, and uh, be with him in spirit as he ministers to us with his word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes, doctor, you, you are on. I'm on now? Yes. Okay, sir. Yes. Thank you very much for your kind introduction, brother. And I'm, dear friends, greetings in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is indeed an honor for me to share the word of God with you this, mo this morning. And I thank God for Dr. David Chigurupati we have been friends since our childhood. I thank him for inviting me to share the word of God this morning with you in this service. I praise the Lord for the wonderful ministry that has been taking place in the Telugu Christian Fellowship, New Jersey, and also his ministry, Dr. David's ministry around the world. We praise the Lord for his life and dedication. Dear friends, it is indeed an honor for me to share the word of God with you. We are living in a very dangerous times. And we all know the, the, the scripture says that uh, there will be perilous times, difficult times dangerous times. During such times, how in the world do we need to live? That has been our concern, especially during this uh, coronavirus. And nobody is able to, it is really interesting to see how the man who is boasting about his scientific advancements and all these things, all of a sudden he came to stand still. He became very helpless, not able to do very much. And waiting for the vaccine for this virus. And the people are losing hope. How can we live as the believers in Jesus Christ? What is the advantage that we have? And that's what I would like to share with you today. At a time like this, people are looking for hope. The future belongs to the people who believe in God and do his will. Once we find the faith in God, faith in God will give us the encouragement. Faith in God will give us as we take him as our shepherd, make him our shepherd. He will give us the security. He will give us the serenity. He will give us the sufficiency. 
and the hope that we have in Jesus Christ will not disappoint us. Faithful is he that calleth you, he will also do it. What he has begun in our life and in our hearts will continue it until the day of Jesus Christ. So that is our hope. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. So in these perilous times, and how do we live? So today I would like to share with you a few things about the dynamic faith. How is your faith? How is your faith walk? As a family, how are we doing it? Apostle Paul, writing the second letter to Corinthians, chapter 13, he talks about few things that he is very much concerned about uh, about the uh, church in Corinth. And uh, those are the things that I would like to share with you. First of all, he says, the scripture is First Corinthians, Second Corinthians, thirteenth chapter, fifth verse, and fifth onwards, and we can read until uh, tenth. At leisure, please read them. There are, I would be highlighting only a few things. First of all, he says, examine your faith. The faith need to be examined. How are we doing? Yes, we might have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ 20 years ago or 25 years ago. How is our, our faith today? Is it static or dynamic. Apostle Paul says, examine your faith. And that means, how is your commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ? The faith also includes the commitment, not only to Jesus Christ, but to his church. How about our commitment to the Great Commission? our commitment to our neighbor. And these are all the things that we need to be concerned about. As Jesus Christ was about to ascend into heaven, people were, or his disciples were really concerned about. They have asked him the question saying that, Lord, are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel at this time? For three and a half years, Jesus was talking to them about the kingdom of God, not about the kingdom of Israel. Many times, we listen, but we do not really hear things. These disciples, they were concerned about the kingdom of Israel when Jesus was talking about the kingdom of God. Jesus said, it is not for you to know the times and the seasons. But when the Holy Spirit comes on you, you'll be powerful. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses unto the ends of the earth. So you're not really ready, wait. Wait in Jerusalem until the promise that I have promised you would come upon you. Yes, they waited. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came upon them. And we can say that is the birthday of the Church of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit filled them until them, then, you know, Jesus said, go into all the world. They did not have any idea where that world was. Because these people, these disciples of Christ, they never traveled more than 200 miles from where they are in their lifetime. 
and they don't have they didn't have any clue where that end of the world is so but i believe that the, when the holy spirit came upon them they knew where that ends of the earth was and also where they are supposed to go and also once they get there what is the thing that they are supposed to tell them and they say about the good news what is the good news good news is jesus christ jesus christ did not bring the gospel into this world he is the gospel that's what we are they are supposed to share and so the when the holy spirit came upon them they were completely transformed they knew their assignment they knew where they are supposed to go and then with they knew where they are, what they are supposed to do because jesus said go and make disciples of all nations and so dear friends their faith was very dynamic and then you know jesus allotted them to go to uh, the jesus told thomas thomas you go to india matthew you go to turkey so like that you know all these disciples were dispersed and the what about the church the church in jerusalem it began to grow to begin with it was 120 people who was who were there in the upper room and then 120 on the day of pentecost when peter preached 3000 people believed in jesus christ so 120 became 3000 from 3000 they grew up to 5000 and then the scripture says they are multiplied their faith was very dynamic because every believer was a witness and so they began to spread the gospel of jesus christ by the time Paul and Silas, when they came to Thessalonica in the 17th chapter, 6th verse, and they said, these are the people who have turned the world upside down. They have come here also. Dear friends, 120, 3,000, 5,000, they're multiplied. And then these people, they have turned the world upside down. And we... If you are living in the United States, according to Gallup poll, more than 51% of the people in, in, people in the United States, they say that they have a, a kind of a experience equivalent to the new birth experience. 51%. We are talking about a little over 150 million. And 5,000 people, several thousands, they have turned the world upside down. And we are several million, more than 150 million. We are not able to make a dent on the spiritual climate of this country. What was right with their faith in the early church? What is wrong with ours? That's what we need to examine. And the Apostle Paul says, examine your faith. What is your faith life like? What are you basing on? Apostle Paul also, he had faith. He has righteousness. But, the right, but that righteousness was a self-righteousness. Until he came to the point when he was about to, when he was going to Damascus, Jesus Christ himself met him. And he became a new creation. And then, dear friends, when he was talking about how he is a faith like, and then, you know, the, the Apostle Paul says, if there is anyone in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away, become Everything has become new. In Galatians, he says, the life that I live, I live in the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So, dear friends, 
That's what the type of faith that he is talking about. He went around sharing the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ because he believed that the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation. Wherever it went, it revolutionized the societies. It revolutionized the human hearts. World things have passed away. Everything has become new. That was the experience that Apostle Paul has. That was the dynamic faith. Do you have that dynamic faith? Or you are just a traditional Christian? Disciples waited. And Saul became Paul at the time. And so, dear friends, he began to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the gospel of Jesus Christ has become a power, power unto salvation to everyone that believed. And so, Apostle Paul, he was asking us to examine your faith simply, dear friends, Christian faith, it is a faith when we have that faith in Jesus Christ that will not make us ashamed. The purpose of the Christian life, what is the purpose? Many people think that the purpose is to go to heaven. But why are you still here? Why are we still here? So the, that means the God has a different purpose than the purpose that we have. Yes, ultimately we will end up in he heaven. You would not go to hell if you believe in Jesus Christ. When you are born again, you would not, be, you would not go to hell. But you would go to heaven when the time comes. But in the meantime, we are in the meantime. Jesus Christ is going to come back again. In the meantime, he has given us a task. That is the fulfilling the great commission. Go and be my witness. Be like salt. Be like light. That's what Jesus said. Jesus commanded his disciples. And then those disciples, yes, one day, the Lord would definitely take them to heaven. But in the meantime, there is a purpose to be fulfilled. The first purpose, first purpose of the Christian life is to be transformed into the likeness of Jesus Christ. We must become like Jesus Christ. It is possible. So therefore, dear friends, and the purpose in God's calling us. Salvation is God calling us into fellow, to have fellowship with His Son, Jesus Christ. In salvation, there are three things. The forgiveness of the past. And the second thing is that we have a relationship with God. We are connected with God. And thirdly, and we will have the gift of eternal life that we would be with God, with Jesus for eternity. But in the meantime, and we will be transformed into the likeness of Jesus Christ. What does it mean to be transformed into the likeness of Jesus Christ? If our faith is dynamic, then we would be following the Lord Jesus Christ. And that means we would be adapting, adapting his value system. Dear friends, there are many people who say that they are, they are born again and they live according to the system, the value system of the world. They haven't really adopted the value system of heaven, value system of Jesus Christ. Value system, 
What is the greatest commandment? A, a lawyer asked Jesus Christ. Jesus said, love your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. And the second one is also like the first one. Love your neighbor as yourself. The value system of Jesus Christ, first of all, is to love our God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul. Are we? Secondly, love our neighbor as ourselves. And by this, Jesus said, you would, they, the world will know that you are my disciple. By what? By love. Loving one another. And loving our neighbor. And dear friends, we choose our friends. God chooses our neighbors. We would not choose the neighbors. We don't have any clue who that neighbor is going to be. Jesus told the story of the Good Samaritan. In that one, the person that helped him, the one that was about to die was a Jew. And the Samaritan came. We all know the Jews and Samaritans have no dealings. They hate one another, hate their guts. But yet here, the situation is such, the one that is needed help was the Jew. He was about to die. First the priest came, then the Levite came. They just saw him and went away. Then the Samaritan came. He descended from his donkey, went to that man, poured the oil on his wounds, bound his wounds, put him on his donkey, took him to the inn, and there he ministered. And Jesus asked that liar, who is his neighbor? And the one that helped him, he said, and Jesus said, go and do likewise. Love the unlovable. Help the helpless. That was the value of Jesus Christ. And are we adapting that value? And then Samaria, the, the Levite, priest and the Levite, they did not get involved in this life of this man who is about to die. Because their philosophy was, what happens, they thought, what happens to us if we get involved? That's why they could not get involved themselves. Because the Judaism says, touching a fellow who is going to die contaminates him. They did not help him. Religion could not help him. They went away. But the Samaritan, his philosophy was, what would happen to him if I don't get involved? Dear friends, we are, God has placed us with the faith in Jesus Christ. We have become the good Samaritans. People who are without God, without hope, they are dying. If we have a dynamic, dynamic faith, as the faith in the early church, faith of the early church. And we would go to them, share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man come to the Father but by me. Exclusive claims, but the message is inclusive. Only Jesus. But that is not politically correct. Whether it is politically correct or not, it is biblically correct. Jesus said, there is no way. And Peter also proclaimed on the day of Pentecost, there is no name in heaven, under heaven, whereby a man or a woman or a child can be saved. It's only in the name of Jesus Christ. Exclusive claims. How can you say that Jesus is the only way? Once, you know, 
the people who knew who are a little bit older they knew there was a johnny carson show and that used to come at about 10 o'clock i did not know about the east coast but uh, in the middle the midwest and all it used to come at 10 o'clock 10 to 11 he was a wonderful entertainer talk host he has a wonderful people like uh, billy graham and the people like that and once he invited the archbishop of canterbury from england is the head of the anglican communion he happened to be in california in los angeles and the johnny carson invited him to be on his show when he went on the show most people they clapped but there was a man who was shouting at him you christians you always say that you are superior than anybody else you say jesus is the only way you are so narrow minded bigoted people and he was went on ranting usually in a place like that i was only one time i was on a johnny carson show he invited me and then everybody usually there you know there they there would be bouncers they would take them out if they somebody is making a galata <laughs> But the, the, the Johnny Carson let him go for about five minutes. He ranted. And that was embarrassing to Johnny and then also to the, the archbishop. When things got settled, archbishop looked at Johnny and then said, you know, you believe that I should say something? And everybody was looking at the archbishop of Canterbury. you said i mean you're looking at me as if i have i have something to say something to say and i needed to say something and they said yes and you know that man said that we christians always say that jesus is the only way to heaven and the archbishop said i never said it I did not say Jesus is the only way. No. I never said it. But you know who said that one? It is Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. So as a follower of Jesus Christ, as a representative of Jesus Christ, I cannot differ with my boss. It is not me that said I am the way the truth and the life no man can come to the father but by me it is Jesus if we have any problem fight with him and that is all, that is very true it might not be politically correct people living in india they say no we are only 2.6% who are christians is that too less than that is the people is the, are the people who really believed in jesus christ and are born again 85% dear friends should we say that what they are following their gods are false gods i'm not saying that but the thing is you know i cannot say anything other than what jesus has said it might not be politically correct but as a believer as a minister one day i need to stand before the lord if he ask me hey what did i tell you and then what did you preach i do not want to be in that position i want to represent my lord and my savior jesus christ in the most truthful way i must be true to the gospel how is your faith jesus christ once i had the opportunity me and my friends we met mother teresa they were asking him they, they were asking her all kinds of questions mother how can you be with the people who are sick and dying all the time she said jesus how can you give back to these people who are having all kinds of diseases 
How can you touch them? She said, Jesus, how can you love them? She said, Jesus, <coughs> I was just sitting by her side. I met her two other times, and this time I was sitting with her. And I said, Mother, for everything you are, say, you are saying, Jesus, what is speciality about Jesus? And she looked at me with the bright eyes and she said, Jesus Christ is unique. He is my savior. He is my Lord. He is incomparable. There is nobody like him. Jesus Christ is unique. That is the faith. Jesus Christ is incomparable. Nobody like him. He is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And therefore, dear friends, we must be transformed into his likeness. That is the reason for which he has called us. His likeness means his value system, his love, love for God, passion for God, and compassion for people. Do you have that kind of a love? That is the type. That is the type of faith. That is the dynamic, dynamic faith. And the belief that without the faith in Jesus Christ, people are lost and are lost for eternity. And the dear friends, in Christian life, there is discipline, law. Nowadays, these words, law and order. Yes. In Christian life also, there need to be a law and order. Discipline. Jesus Christ had a discipline. He has some di disciplines that he has really followed. One is, early morning, first thing in the morning, he got up and he spent time with his father that is in prayer. Prayerful life, and they're talking to the people about G, about the Father, and he knew why he came into this world to seek and to save that which was lost. He was always on the Father's business, starting from twelve year old. When he got lost, they thought to pay parents thought that he got lost. And he said, don't you know that I, am, I must be in my father's business? He was all the time conscious of the fact that he is in this world to represent the father. Are you conscious of him? Do you love him? Are we adopting his value system? Are we following him? Are we loving him? With all our heart, are we loving the people who are in the faith, loving our brethren, sisters? And also, are we loving the lost? If we, if we are doing, dear friends, that is the dynamic faith. And Jesus Christ adopted certain disciplines. Simplicity in life. Believing that God knows everything and God cares for us. But we need to seek the kingdom of God and his, his, his righteousness first. These are some of the values. Without those values, dear friends, there is no prosperity for a Christian. Without adopting the value system of Jesus Christ with discipline, there is no prosperity. There is no progress in life, Christian life. There is no peace for a Christian unless we adopt his policies. So, Apostle Paul says, see whether your faith is intact. Examine your faith. Secondly, he says, don't do evil. For Christians, who decides what is evil and what is not? It is Jesus and it is the scripture. And that means who need to, we need to study the scripture. 
God has given us everything to lead a life that is acceptable acceptable to God. Telugu lo unta the bhakti, bhakti ki samandhi chena twenty samasthaman kuda devu dhanu krencharu. Whatever that is needed for us to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, to live a godly life, He has given everything for us. First, He has given God. God Himself. We need the Savior, Jesus Christ. Unless there is Holy Spirit, we cannot come to the Father. Unless there is Holy Spirit, there is no Christianity at all. He has given us the Holy Spirit. He comes into our lives in His Spirit, and then He has given us an example how to live. how to fight the temptations and that is jesus christ he is our model and he has given us his word that is the architectural plan to build our lives and our families so he given he has given us everything so that we might be lead a life that is acceptable to him a life that would be victorious for him but the problem is are we really using all these tools to live a godly life and above all he has given us the fellowship that is the church of jesus christ are you committed to him is your faith leading to commit to the brethren to the mission to his mission to his values to his love are we using all these tools that god has put us in his, at our disposal to lead a godly life if we are not our faith is deficient so therefore dear friends let us examine our faith at a time like this the second lady dear friends and then he says don't do evil Christians, do they do evil? Who decides what is evil and what is not? It is the word of God. It is God Himself. There are many things that we should be, uh, should not be doing. One thing that we should not do is, once we know what God's will is, we must follow it. We should not go against it. Going against the known will of God is evil in God's sight. Jonah, he knew. God's word came to Jonah and then said to Jonah, and he said, "Here I am, Lord. I am at your disposal." God said, "Go to Nineveh." We all know he did not go. He tried to go to Tarshish. What happened? he brought calamity to himself what are the believers doing when they do not know god when they do not follow the known god's will jonah said you tell us who you are and what are you doing here jonah confessed i am the servant of the most high god i'm running away from him huh and the people who are heathen they were afraid uh, when they said uh, i'm the servant of the most high god and i'm running away from him who can run away from the most high god uh, david said if i go to heaven you are there if i go into the depth of the sea you are there your hand will lead me where can i go lord where can you run you cannot turn away from god god will catch you your disobedience will catch you up god is going to put you in the fish stomach for a while until you come to him you come to yourself then when you come to yourself it is going to vomit and then fish that's what it did it, it took it took 3 days for the fish to go to 
where Jonah was to go to Nineveh. And then he was completely transformed. His physical appearance was completely transformed because all the chemicals that were in the stomach, in the belly of the fish, and uh, our friend Jonah was a three, I mean, he spent three days living in those chemicals. And then, you know, he was transformed entirely a different uh, person. Dear friends, are you running away from God? God says, stop it. Don't run. Run to him. He will have mercy upon you. So disobeying God's will is doing evil. And the thirdly, he says, do what is right. What is right in the sight of God, not in the sight of people. They are men pleasers, God pleasers. And we ought to be God's pleasers at any time, all the time. Do what is right. Once I had the opportunity, actually twice, myself and 11 of my friends, we 11, we had a dinner with uh, then President Gorbachev, the president of Russia. He was a uh, second time he was running for, a pres for the presidency of, uh, of Russia. At the time his uh, popularity was only 1%. The person who came after him, the Elson, President Elson, he took away the security. He took away the access to the press. And there were already a couple of times that people wanted to murder him. And then also he was, because he completely, and he gave freedom to all the 20 countries of Eastern Europe. The Russians, they consider Gorbachev as the traitor. So you can, during that time when we were having dinner, you can ask him any questions. As long as it is not too personal. So one of the questions that we have asked is, now your country calls you traitor. And with this popularity of 1%, perhaps he would never become the president of Russia again. There were already two attempts on your life. You, have, you don't have any access to uh, newspapers or the television. You don't have any security. People call you traitor. Knowing all these things, because you have liberated 20 Eastern European countries, knowing all these things, why did you liberate Eastern Europe? And dear friends, without any hesitation, President Gorbachev said, I felt it was the right thing to do. Doing the right thing, it has its price. John the Baptist did the right thing. It costed his head. In life, there are difficult things. To stand for the Lord is difficult. In, in this world, we will lose. But in the, in the world to come, we gain. He that does the will of the Lord will stand forever. Future belongs to people who have faith in God and do his will. Do what is right. And next thing he says, be a builder. Don't tear other people down. Be an encourager. Dear friends, there is so much of encouragement is needed in these days in our families, in our churches. If there are 100 people, 99% of the people, there are discouragers. Only 1% would be the encouragers. Are you in that 1%? The Lord wants you to be an encourager. When Saul found his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, 
and he went to Antioch. He became a changed person. In the next five minutes, I'll close my message. And he went to Antioch. People could not believe him. Everybody avoided him. Nobody would talk to him. And he thought, if this is the church of Jesus Christ, I don't want to be a part of it. So he went away. A third week, he did not show up. And the people, the believers, the leaders, and they left a sigh of relief. Thank God he is gone. Not all the leaders have the same kind of opinion. One person, he wanted to know what happened to that brother. We knew that he was transformed by the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He was the perse persecutor of the church. But now he became the follower of Jesus Christ. His life was completely transformed. He became a new creature. He has come to our church for the last two Sundays. And then now the third Sunday he did not show up. What happened to him? And he wanted to find out what happened to him. That was Barnabas. He went and found. He became Paul. He, he went to his hometown, Tarsus. And then, you know, Barnabas went to him and said, Brother, what are you doing here? He was a little bit, might have been cross with him, saying that, you know, where do you want me to be? Do you want me to come to your church? Where they were, they're not friendly. They did not even talk to me. When I sat there, the fellow that was sitting beside, he went, he got up and ran away. Nobody will give me a cup of cold water. Nobody showed me any love. To such a gathering, I thought I decided not to step into that place again. No, 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 brother. That is a mistake. On behalf of the congregation, you know, Barnabas apologized for their behavior and begged him. You are a professor of religion, professor of Judaism. And you know everything. We need to know so many. You need to be our teacher. Please come. He begged him. And at his request, he came. He came to Antioch. And on fine, uh, one fine morning, Barnabas stood up before the congregation and then said, and you know, we, we have ill-treated this brother. We did not show the love of Christ to him. We sent him. We were not hospitable to him. We did not show any love to him. We need to apologize. And then we know that his life was completely transformed. He became a new creature. God is going to use him in a mighty way. Therefore, I vouch, I vouch for him today. Anything happens to you because of him, I am responsible. Ask me. He stood with Paul. By standing with him, he encouraged Paul. By encouraging him, encouraging him Barnabas gave one of the strongest believers and then also strongest servant of God. After Jesus Christ, Paul was a great stalwart of the kingdom of God. And then and also the church of Jesus Christ. By encouraging him, Barnabas gave church a great gift in Paul. Whom are you encouraging? Are you an encourager? Apostle Paul says, I'm not here to tear you down. I am here to build you. Are you a builder? Builder of the church? We need to examine all these things. The Apostle Paul says, examine your faith. All these things are included. Are you doing the will of God? Are you concerned about the lost people? Are you loving the Lord? And for the believer, there are two things that are necessary. Passion for God and a compassion for people.
Are we having it? Have we some faith? Are we doing the right thing? What is right in the sight of God? Are we building people? Are you tearing them down? Are you encourager? Are you discourager? And finally, dear friends, we are not perfect. Apostle Paul says we are on the way to for perfection. Let us move towards the perfection. We are not perfect yet. Perfection would not come in this life, as long as you are living as a human being. Once we get to heaven, we'll see Jesus. Dear friends, are you satisfied with your Christian life? And we came from all the way from our country. God has brought you here. You are satisfied because you have a wonderful salary, wonderful home, wonderful family, wonderful car. Everything is going on very well. What about the kingdom of God? Are you seeking the kingdom of God and His righteousness? What are you doing? God has done everything for you. He has given you extra actually by bringing you here. Coming here is not a sin. But dear friends, a press reporter asked Billy Graham, "With this, I close." Dr. Billy Graham, you preached in all continents. You have led the millions of people to the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you imagine? Once you get into heaven, when you see Jesus face to face, what are the first words that Jesus is going to utter about you? What is going to tell you? And the press reporter was waiting for a big reply. And this humble servant of God, he said, "When I see Jesus, the first thing that is going to say would be, 'You should have done more. With all the privileges that I have given you, with all the platforms that I have given you, with all the contacts with the big people, kings, presidents, and everybody, you should have done more. Yes, God has given us all these things." given us everything that is needed for our righteous life he has given us more than anything of a fellow man in in india and the same reply we need to give god jesus says you should do more for the kingdom of god let us bring our faith to the mark and then let us look unto jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith doing what is right for the kingdom of god exalting him living for him and doing the will of god that is costly i paid the due my father was killed for preaching the gospel of jesus christ but that was god's will and so dear friends the lord is asking us how is your faith and he says you should do more for the kingdom of god amen let's pray gracious god you spoke to us help us to follow you love you with all of our heart with all of our mind with all of our soul and help us to do that is pleasing in your sight in jesus name amen um, thank you um, dear brother god bless you all thank you thank you pastor sam thank you for uh, reminding us to examine our faith uh because we need to test uh, and see what our commitment is to our, our lord uh because uh 
Are we being committed to the Great Commission and uh, what is our commitment to our neighbor? Thank you uh, for reminding us that during this family conference, we thank you for coming here. And uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Yesu Padam for uh, this wonderful message, uh, a timely message for us. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh, from we move on from Reverend Dr. Yes Padam, we now go to a, a short uh, the worship uh, in uh, Telugu by Kirtana and Abhi. Uh, lead us in a uh, uh, Telugu song. Uh, Brother, uh, Sister Kirtana, if you're there. Actually, no, uh, we do have, uh, instead, we have uh, 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 Dr. Uh, Premanand Rai. Uh, who will be having a special song for us in Telugu. Uh, Dr. Rai, are you online? Yes. So, uh, we have a special song from Dr. Rai. Prabhu Roman Rakshapadai in 20 years to Christo Parishuddha Namamulu. America, New Jersey, Rasulu in 20. Telugu Christa Vipiswasulaku. Prapancha Vyaptunga Vunna 20. Vipiswasulaku. Andar ki kuda. Doctor <laughs> Vishwasa Pundariki, Nai Lagu Mukiga, coordinate chest retreat, Shamagariki, Antamatame Kakunda, Ipatavarakuman, English learning message with now, Daiva Sayakulu, Gospel of Shishna of India, Adjectionu, Vishwavata, Paricharilo, Vishista Christa Vanaikuru, Reverend Bishop Pandakunda, Nakumari, Gospel of Shishna of India, Vari Paricharilo, Nenu Chala Samachal Kanisa Mupem or Samachal Vari of Savaru Nan Achat Minga Yudarabu and Yanto Raha Padinanduku, Christ of Anai Gulabu, Reverend Esupa the Karikina, Perchayment of Progressive Anatikalam Lone, Bisuvi of the Perichet Lubu, Hanani Amenity, Perichet Chester Twenty, Divan Egal, Prabuncha Savati Karanado, Hananga Water Purchin at Twenty, Christ of Anai Guru, Variki Vandana Chilistu. Maribusari, Bishop Yapta, Telugu Christava Naikulaku, Biswasulaku, the online Dwara, Beaches to Net Twenty, Biswasulaku, Isamilu Ipudu. Mana Prophet and Yesu Christ to Parish of the Namu Lobi and the Kimarik Sari, Subhavi on the Nal Telijasuna Mizaniki Nenu track music chase him on the Chalan Kunan Kani, Samia Bhavala Augustlo, Jarina Tlatinenu, record chase a pumpal and Kunan Kani, Ratri Naku, Messenger Audom, E. Karikramani, Putjad and Deuna Kukuru Chupincharu, E. Pata Kitanal. Nalavayada of Kirtana, Padovachanum, Mida Adhar Padi, Deudu, a Parishuta, Wakim Doran and Prairie Pinchi, Kirtan Radaniki, Divinjanduku Parikusari, Peter Tilian twenty, Nanagariki, Apostle Reverend Doctor David Chiu Padavari, Marusari, Na Kurtajan Telijestu, Ipata, Ami Bandusunam. Ah, 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 Kasrayam Yutha Maina Maranda Maina Devu 
Thank you for your song. Uh, you are most welcome, sir. Thank you very much. I request Brother Sam Kudumala to just say a short prayer. Brother Sam, Chinna Pradhan Chaintra. Sure, uh, uh, Brother Ravi. Uh, let's pray. Talalo Vanchana Tlaite Manamo Pradhan Chaintra Skundam. Prema Namo Kumukurva Kaligna Maka Priya Parloka Patanri. మీక ఘనమైన నామాన్ని బట్టి మీకు వేలాది స్థుతులు స్తోత్రం చెల్లించుకుంటున్నాం మరి తండ్రి శుక్రవారము సాయంత్రము మొదలుకొని ఇప్పటి వరకు కూడా మీ యొక్క కృప ద్వారా టీసీఎఫ్ఎన్జే ట్వంటీ సెవెంత్ క్రిస్టియన్ ఫ్యామిలీ కాన్ఫరెన్స్ ని మీరు ఆశీర్వదిస్తూ వచ్చి ఉంటున్నారు వాటిని బట్టి మీకు వేలాది స్థుతులు స్తోత్రములు దేవా మా అందరికీ ఆత్మీయంగా ఆశీర్వదకరంగాను మీ యొక్క నామానికి మహిమకరంగాను మీరు యొక్క కూటములు మీరు తండ్రి నడిపిస్తున్న విధానాన్ని బట్టి మీకే స్థుతులు స్తోత్రములు మరి ఈ చివరి 
కూటమికి మేము వచ్చి ఉంటున్నాం వీ హ్యావ్ కమ్ టు ద లాస్ట్ సెషన్ మరి మీ యొక్క ప్రియదాసుడు మీ యొక్క సేవకుడు మీ యొక్క ప్రియ బిడ్డ పాస్టర్ దీవనయ్య గారిని ఇప్పటి వరకు కూడా మీరు ఎంతో ఘనముగా వాడుకుని ఉంటున్నారు మా మధ్య నడిపించుంటున్నారు మమ్మల్ని ఎంతో తండ్రి మరి ఆ విశ్వాసంలో బలపరచు విధముగా మీ వాక్యాన్ని అందించుంటున్నారు ఈ సమయంన మీ యొక్క రెండింతల ఆత్మ అభిషేకముతో మీ యొక్క ప్రియ బిడ్డని పాస్టర్ దీవనయ్య గారిని మీరు అభిషేకించి మీ యొక్క మాట మా కొరకు మీరు ఏర్పాటు చేసిన మాట ధారాళంగాను సుటిగాను రాగలుగు కృప చూపించండి మా యొక్క చెవులను తండ్రి దేవాది దేవ శ్రద్ధ కలిగిన చెవులుగా మీరు తయారు చేయండి మా హృదయంలో మంచి నేలగా దున్నండి తండ్రి మేము వినువారముగా మాత్రమే కాకుండా ఆచరణలో పెట్టు వారముగా మా యొక్క విశ్వాసాన్ని మీరు బలపరిచి ఆత్మీయ నడుపుల దాయి చేయమని స్థుతి ఘనత మహిమ ప్రబలు మీకు ఆరోపిస్తూ ఏసు ఘనమైన నామమున అడిగి వేడుకుంటున్నాము తండ్రి ఆమె ఇప్పుడు మన మధ్యన అంకుల్ డేవిడ్ గారు అనౌన్స్మెంట్స్ ఇస్తారు డాక్టర్ డేవిడ్ అంకుల్ అంకుల్ డేవిడ్ ఉంటే ఇఫ్ యు దేర్ ఆన్లైన్ కెన్ యూ Are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, uncle, we can hear you. 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 అది జరిగినప్పుడు ఏంది విన్నా కూడా ఉపయోగం లేదు కనుక మనము ఆచరణలో పెట్టేవారిగా ప్రభు మనలందరినీ చేయగాక ప్రకటనలు ఈరోజు మధ్యాహ్నం ఇంగ్లీష్ సర్వీస్ ఉండదు ఆ అది జ్ఞాపకం ఉంచుకోండి మా ఎవ్రీ సండే త్రీ టు ఫోర్ థర్టీ ఇంగ్లీష్ సర్వీస్ ఉంటుంది కానీ ఈ రోజు ఉండదు తర్వాత ప్రతి ఆదివారం 10.30 టెన్ థర్టీ టు ట్వెల్వ్ థర్టీ తెలుగులో సర్వీస్ జరుగుతుంది త్రీ టు ఫోర్ థర్టీ ఇంగ్లీష్లో జరుగుతుంది నెక్స్ట్ త్రీ సండేస్ ఇంగ్లీష్ సర్వీస్ డాక్టర్ టీవీ థామస్ అని కెనడాలో ఉంటారు ఆయన ఇంటర్నేషనల్ ఇవాంజలిస్ట్ రవి జగరాజ్ ఆ లెవెల్లో సువార్త ప్రకటించే వ్యక్తి వారు ఇంగ్లీష్ సర్వీస్ నెక్స్ట్ త్రీ సండేస్ మాట్లాడబోతున్నారు త్రీ థర్టీ త్రీ టు ఫోర్ థర్టీ మార్నింగ్ సర్వీస్ టెన్ థర్టీ టు ట్వెల్వ్ థర్టీ మీరు మా సర్వీసెస్ లో పాల్గొనాలంటే యూట్యూబ్ లో ఆ డీటెయిల్స్ అన్ని ఉన్నాయి యూట్యూబ్ ద్వారా ఈ మెసేజ్లన్నీ రికార్డ్ చేయబడుతున్నవి దానిలో ఏ విధముగా జాయిన్ అవ్వాలను అక్కడ విశదీకరించబడింది ఈ కాన్ఫరెన్స్ లింక్ మటుకు వాడకండి కాన్ కాన్ఫరెన్స్ లింక్ సెపరేట్ లింక్ సండే సర్వీసులకి వేరే లింక్ ఉన్నది తర్వాత కొన్ని ప్రార్థన అంశములు రాత్రి మనకు మోడరేట్ చేసిన సాయిమన్ భూషి గారి వియ్యంకులు నిన్న రాత్రి తొమ్మిది గంటలకే ప్రభుని నిద్రించారు కెనడాలో కనుక ఆ కుటుంబ కుమార్తె యొక్క మామగారు కుమార్తె డాక్టర్ షారన్ యొక్క మామగారు అల్లుడి పేరు ఆండ్రూ ఆయన కూడా డాక్టరే ఆ కొడుకు కూతురు అల్లుడు వారు పుట్టిన బేబీతో కెనడాలో ఉన్నారు మరి వీరు కూడా వెళ్తారని అనుకుంటున్నాను వారి కుటుంబ ఆదరణ గురించి అలాగే చాలా మంది ఈ మధ్యన చనిపోయి ఉన్నారు ప్రభు నన్ను నిద్రించారు దేవదానం గారు మిస్సెస్ నిర్మలాదేవి గుమ్మడి గారు కొన్నూరులో తర్వాత డే కాస్ట్ డేవిడ్ బాబు గారి కుటుంబంలో ముగ్గురు బంధువులు ప్రభు సన్నిధికి వెళ్ళిపోయారు కనుక వీరందరినీ దయచేసి మీ ప్రార్థనలో ఎత్తిపట్టండి తర్వాత ఇది వర్చువల్ కాన్ఫరెన్స్ కదా మనం ఈ కాన్ఫరెన్స్ లో ఆఫరింగ్స్ అలాంటివి ఏమి తీసుకోవడానికి వీలు పడే కాన్ఫరెన్స్ కాదు ఇది మరి అయితే మనం విన్నాం పేద ప్రజల గురించి విన్నాం అవసరాలు ఉన్న ప్రజల గురించి విన్నాం తబు మిమ్మల్ని కనుక ప్రేరేపించితే ఈ పేద ప్రజలకి అవసరం ఉన్న ప్రజలకి సహాయం చేయడానికి ప్రభు మిమ్మల్ని ప్రేరేపిస్తే మీరు జెల్ యూజ్ చేయాల్సిన జెల్ ద్వారా టీసీఎఫ్ఎన్జ్ అకౌంట్ లోకి ఆ డెజిగ్నేటెడ్ గిఫ్ట్ పంపిస్తే ఎవరికైతే పంపించారో వారికే అందజేస్తాం జెల్ వాడినప్పుడు నా సెల్ ఫోన్ 
థ్యాంక్ యూ అంకల్ ఇప్పుడు ఒక చిన్న స్లైడ్ ఉంది టీసీఎఫ్ ఎన్జే వాళ్ళు చూపిస్తారు జస్ట్ వన్ షార్ట్ స్లైడ్ బ్రదర్ కెన్ యూ షోర్ థ్యాంక్ యూ so uh, we have come to the end of the uh, conference uh, thank you all for attending all the uh, these sessions thank you uh, for your commitment and support to our ministry and we hope that you have been blessed by this uh, conference and uh, we look forward to again meeting you again next year hopefully we'll meet at a physical location so at this time i would request uh, pastor lancy rosario Uh, to come forward and close this conference with a closing prayer and a benediction pastor lancy
Yes. Master Lang, you are on mute. Can you please unmute? Uh, Pastor Lancy, we cannot hear you. <clears throat> uh, we, we can't uh, hear Pastor Lancy. Uh, is he there? Pastor Lancy. Okay, uh, Devanaya Garunara is uh, Dr. Devanaya. Is he there, Anga, Uncle? Oh, there he is. Uh, uh, Lancy, can you hear us? We cannot hear you. Uh, Pastor Lancy, we cannot hear you. Oh, okay. So th these are some of the difficulties we are having with the audio from the other side. Just bear with us. And um, <clears throat> if not... Okay. Uh, I, I, I got you on the phone. Oh, okay. Good, good. Now we can hear I, you. I, can I, you... I lose the phone. Devil is a liar. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We just thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you, Father. We praise you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your word, Lord, that you gave to Dr. Lord, Psalm 4610. Be still and know that I am God. Yes, Father. We thank you for the theme, Father, the theme, the title. Help us, Lord. Help us, every brother and sister today, Lord, to be still, Lord. Lord, we need to be still, Lord. Lord, when we are still, your presence comes, Lord. Your presence fills the place. Your presence fills our hearts and our lives, Father. Our homes, Lord. You want us and our family, our children to be filled with your presence, Lord. Fill us, Lord. Give us the revelation today. Let the truth, as Pastor Divani also shared about Psalm 46, Lord, let your word, Lord, manifest today, Lord, in each of our souls, spirit, body, home, in our life, Father. As Moses, Lord, Moses experienced your presence. He was still in your presence, Lord. Help us to stay put, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for Dr. David and Dr. Pottery for ministering, uh, partnering in this great work, Lord. And thank you for 27 years, Lord, of this uh, family Christian Family Conference, bringing us all together, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the love and unity, Lord. Let your unity be there, Lord, as you mentioned in Psalm 133. Unite us all, Father. Unite us, brothers, dwelling together in unity. For there your blessings lie, Lord. We need your blessings, Father. We don't need our blessings. We need your blessings. Let your blessings flow today because of our unity and love, Father. Thank you for Sister Kirtana as she reminded us about being true worshippers. Oh, Father, teach us how to be true worshippers. As we mentioned in John 4, 23, you're seeking for true worshippers, Father. We want to be true worshippers who will worship you, Father, in spirit and in truth, Father. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your servant, Dr. Yesu Bandela, for sharing to turn the world upside down. Lord, pour us your power, Lord. Pour us your anointing, Lord. To do more for your kingdom, Lord. We want to do more, especially during this lockdown period, Lord. Help us to be bold and confident, Lord. We need you. We need your power. As you mentioned in Acts 10, 38, Lord, we need your Holy, we have your Holy Spirit, but we need your power. Empower each one of us today to take our communities, our neighbors, our workplace for Jesus to be very radical for you, Lord. To be radical for you, Lord. Because our focus is heaven. Our ultimate place is heaven, Father. Help us to fulfill your great commission. 
we thank you father we thank you for dr chris perumala dr david crandall lord dr chinna babu sankavali dr pramod joshua burns dr yesu bandela and pastor divanaya lord we just thank you for your speakers lord let everything we learn be stored in our spirit soul heart mind body lord help us to once again watch through the youtube and lord receive it in our spirit lord and walk with what you have spoken for us lord we want to be your faithful servants lord we want you to say you are good and faithful servants lord we thank you lord we thank you lord we also break every stronghold every hindering spirits which will not allow us to walk with you lord as you not walk with you i take authority and bind every hindering spirit every spirit of fear insecurity lack guilt we bind you in the name of jesus among us in the name of jesus we thank you lord we thank you for no weapon fashion against each one of us will prosper lord no weapon father we thank you and praise you we bless you today in jesus mighty name we pray amen and amen and now may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you may the lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace may the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god our father and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now and forever and ever amen and amen amen thank you thank you thank you, thank you lord go in peace and serve the lord amen, amen. yes thank you lord so we come to the end of our conference and uh, again I, we hope you've been blessed by this amen and, uh, we look forward to continuing to serve you uh, as uh, dear brothers and sisters in christ every sunday here at tcf nj and uh, next year hopefully we will all meet as a family in a conference uh, in a physical location so until then Uh thank you and uh, goodbye